it's very much a charm-based kind of thing that he does. You know, like the most popular guy kind of wins the contract, and he was absolutely great at it. Psychologists say middle children often pine desperately for their parents' attention, and the young Chris is no different. He idolizes his father's confident charm and easy laugh. It was all about his dad, at least in conversations with me. Everything was about his father. He sees the way his dad lives. He sees the way his dad eats. He sees the way his dad drinks, and, and it all sticks. But in competition with three brothers and a sister, Farley realizes his jokes have to be louder, funnier, and more outrageous than anyone else. When insecurity hit, then he would do something over the top. I think it was nervousness. I think it was a shyness. I think there was a wanting to be bold. And I also think there was some darkness there. And in those moments when his father's attention falls on someone else, Farley turns to food for the affirmation he craves. When a kid is growing up in a household and they're feeling that they can't express their feelings, they can't, you know, really talk about what's going on, well, the first thing that feels good is food. That becomes the first drug of choice. And that's what it was for Chris. The heavier he gets, the greater the dangers for the young Farley as he navigates the halls of Catholic school, where both his and his father's weight are easy targets. His dad was just kind of a big guy at the beginning, but uh, ballooned to 600 pounds, and so it became kind of an embarrassment for Chris. People would snicker, make comments, and it was doubly hurtful for him because he looked up to his dad so much. This was a huge uh, area for Chris. Fatty falls and goes boom. A fat guy falling is funny. It's funny on stage, and it's funny in his real life. That was a trick that he knew that was going to work probably 100% of the time. Encouraged by his classmates, Fatty Farley acts out constantly. But rather than have to face the consequences of his actions, Farley's father, Tom Sr., has his back. He'd be called into the school, and they'd end up laughing on the way home. When he gets that laugh, which is what he's wanted all along, there's no consequences. Uh, you begin to see yourself as a little bit uh, untouchable. And back to the bars. Farley loves his new lifestyle, so much so that he will do anything to keep the party going. He liked drugs. He liked the way they, they made him feel. But beyond that, he started to get this extra idea that that's what's going to help me stay on. It's kind of working for him at this point. In record time, Farley ascends to the main stage at Second City, the same stage from which John Belushi had been plucked from obscurity to fame. And to Farley's delight, Chris's father comes to watch the performances. He would come and laugh louder than anybody at the show, so you, you knew he was present. That, to him, was like the, the, the most golden feeling in the world. You know, he even talked about that later in his life, like there's only one person I'm really trying to make laugh.